Hello, we're here to talk about how to install Active Directory services on Windows Server 2012. For this demonstration, I already have Windows Server 2012 running as a virtual machine. Let's go ahead and log on with an account. In this example, I'll go ahead and log on with the local administrator account that's already defined on this machine. Okay, now that we've logged on, you'll notice the server manager has launched automatically. Before you start the process of promoting this server to a domain controller, you want to make sure that the server has a static IP address. You also want to make sure that it's pointing to itself for DNS, since this is going to be the first Active Directory domain controller running DNS services. Okay, let's go ahead and begin. In Server Manager, go ahead and click on Local Server. Okay, go ahead and click on Manage, Add Roles and Features. Make sure that Role-based or Feature-based installation is selected. Click Next. Go ahead and select the server that's listed in this server pool. In our example, we only have one server listed. This is the only server on our network. Click Next. You're going to select Active Directory Domain Services. You'll notice that additional features and tools will be installed. Go ahead and click Add Features. Click Next. You'll notice that the Group Policy Management will also be installed. Click Next. This screen is just giving you more information about Active Directory Domain Services. After you've read it, go ahead and click Next. We'll go ahead and click the checkbox to restart the destination server automatically if required. A pop-up is asking whether or not you want further notifications. We'll go ahead and just say yes to allow automatic restarts. Okay, the installation has completed. To continue the promotion of this server to a domain controller, either click this link or go ahead and close this window and we'll launch it from Server Manager. You'll notice that some tasks are pending. That's why you have this notification alert. If you click on it, it'll let you know that you'll need to continue the promotion of this server to the main controller. One thing that's new with Server 2012 is that DC Promo has been deprecated. You can no longer use the DC Promo command to promote a server to the main controller. So go ahead and click on this link. Okay, in this part of the installation, you'll need to decide whether you're going to add a domain controller to an existing domain, you're going to add a new domain to an existing forest, or you're going to go ahead and create a new forest. If you're not sure which to choose, let's look at each of these in more detail. The first option just promotes this server as a domain controller to an existing domain. This means that you already have Active Directory running on the network. The second option will create an, a new domain to an existing forest. third option is add a new forest. This is where you want to create an actual instance of Active Directory. We're going to choose this option since we don't have Active Directory running on this network yet. You'll also need to provide a root domain name. For this example, we're just going to call it domain.local. Make sure that you, the name you pick is fully qualified. Go ahead and click Next. On this screen, you need to pick the force function level and the domain function level. If you click on the drop-down, you'll see some different options. You'll notice that even though we're installing Windows Server 2012, we have the option to set the force function level at 2003, 2008, 2008 R2, or 2012. Since this is the first domain controller in a new brand new force, we're going to go ahead and select 2012. However, if you had plans of bringing in a 2008 or 2008 R2, or even a 2003 domain controller into this forest, you'll need to choose the appropriate force function level. So we'll select 2012 for both options. The system also has enabled the domain name system checkbox. The wizard has determined that we don't have DNS running, so we'll go ahead and allow that checkbox to remain active. Systems also detected that, that we don't have a global catalog server. Obviously, we don't because this is the first domain controller in the domain. You'll also need to type in a directory services restore mode password. This is the password that you'll be using if you ever bring up the domain controller in DSRM. Click Next. Now you might see this warning message where a delegation for this DNS server cannot be created because the authoritative parent zone cannot be found. This is normal and expected. We're going to go ahead and click Next. The wizard is now trying to verify the NetBIOS domain name. Normally, the, no, the NetBIOS domain name just strips off the top-level domain extension that you've chosen. So in this case, rather than it being domain.local, it's going to use the short NetBIOS name for just domain. You could change it to something else, but normally your NetBIOS name should be a derivative of your fully qualified domain name. Click Next. In this part of the installation, you'll need to choose where to install your database, log files, and sysfile folder. For this example, we only have one, one drive. However, 
on a production domain controller, you may want to have three different arrays of disks so that you can separate the database, log file, and sysfile. Click Next. Review your selections and click Next when you're ready. Here you can review the prerequisite check results. There's two warning messages which are expected. The first one is indicating that the default settings for 2012 domain controllers allows for cryptographic algorithms compatible with Windows NT4. If you have no intentions of using NT4.0 clients, you may want to visit the knowledge base article referenced in this window so that you can go ahead and disable that. The second warning message has to do with the delegation that we saw earlier. Expect it, so we'll go ahead and click install. The process is just letting us know that the server is about to reboot. Okay, once the server has completed its, its restart process, go ahead and log in again. Okay, you'll notice now in Server Manager, on the left side of the screen we have the ADDS and DNS applications installed. If you want to go ahead and manage Active Directory domain services, click on Tools and launch one of the Active Directory related consoles. For this example, we'll go ahead and click on Active Directory Users and Computers. You notice on the left side of the screen we have our domain object, domain.local, and if we expand it, a series of containers and OUs will be displayed. These are basically the default objects that are created when you promote a server to a domain controller. If you click on the domain controller's OU, you'll notice that on the right side pane we have our domain controller listed. Let's go ahead and minimize this. We can also launch the Active Directory Administrative Center. The Active Directory Administrative Center allows you to go ahead and manage your Active Directory in an easier fashion. You can do things like search for accounts, reset passwords, or even create new objects. Okay, let's go ahead and close this. Let's go ahead and also take a look at our DNS zone. Click on Tools, DNS. Okay, go ahead and click on the icon next to our server. Do the same for forward lookup zones. And you'll notice that the Active Directory domain wizard created two zones for us. We have the underscore msdcs.domain.local and domain.logo. We need these two zones to support Active Directory in our infrastructure. Let's go ahead and close this. It appears that we were successful in creating our first domain controller in the forest. Well, that's the end of this tutorial. Thank you for watching.